Let's slot in our 3090, our Ryzen 9 3900X, 163 frames a second at 4K on an RTX 3090. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an RTX 3090. This is an AMD PC, and we're going to find out whether PCI Gen 4 actually makes a difference. And apparently we're going to talk very dramatically in this video because this is a big topic. Now you may or may not have seen all of the different builds that we've done on this channel, including putting a 3080 inside this tiny little 81 chassis. We've done 3090 builds, 3080 overclocking, all of that good stuff is covered. You can find those videos in the eye in the top right corner if you're interested. You guys are saying you have to go for Ryzen because you need that PCI Generation 4 support for these cards or you're not going to get the most out of them. You're going to be losing performance. And that's what we're going to test here today. So this is an X570 system, so we have PCI Gen 4. We're going to grab the RTX 3090, we're going to put it in this system, and we're going to test it at Gen 4 speeds versus Gen 3. And that will give us the lowdown, I guess, as to whether the increased data rate actually translates into better gaming performance. And then once we've done that, we're going to take our 3090 out of that system, put it in a fairly similar Intel 10850K PC, and then rerun the test to see if it performs better or worse in what would be a similarly priced Intel system. Should be an interesting video. To show you just how committed I am to the cause of giving you guys all the informations, I'm uh, actually taking the CPU out of my own I say personal system, it's my living room system that I've been using to play Horizon Zero Dawn and test stability on overclocks and stuff with the 3080. But we need to take the CPU out of here and put it in here. The one I have inside is the 3900X. And the reason I'm using that, not the 3950X, is because this is the most similarly priced, I guess, to the 10900K and of course the 10850K that we're using today. Not that taking a CPU out should actually be particularly difficult but I've said that before and things have gone wrong so hopefully that won't happen today. If this PC never works again I'm blaming you. Yeah you. I love how I just have this case all ready to go. I'm like a chef. Here's one I made earlier because I did. I did make it earlier so it's true. So that was as simple as ever. Let's slot in our 3090. This one is of course MSI's Gaming X and yes I have decided that this light bar along the front just looks a bit tacky. Every, the fans on the front, yes. Light bar, no. Aha, aha, aha. And we're gonna use XMP just to make sure that the RAM is actually running at its full speed. But otherwise, no overclocking. Just Gen 4 versus Gen 3. I found it, so there we go. PCI X16 bus interface. At the moment it's on auto, but you can choose between one, two, three, and four. So we're gonna put this in Gen 3 mode. To keep everything as fair as possible, I've set the whole thing to Gen 3, including that storage, which may upset some of you, but I don't want to risk accidentally having it in Gen 4 mode and not realizing, so that's the test. The first game that we'll be testing is Horizon Zero Dawn, firstly because I really like it, I own it, but also because it will give you a proper lowdown at the end that you can easily screenshot and compare. Plus, it's a very good looking game and it taxes our system like... I was going to say nobody's business, but I say that all the time. It taxes the system like HMRC. Yes! <laughs> Come on, that was good. That was good. What's it stand for? Her Majesty's Revenue Service. No. C. Customs? Her HMRC. Next up, we have Civilization VI Gathering Storm, and we're doing the benchmark at 1080p and 4K. This is the graphics benchmark, not the AI one, but it's still very intensive when it comes to that CPU, and I want to do four different games rather than four similar games, as to me that doesn't really make sense. We want to test a wide variety of variables. Next up, we have Apex Legends, and this is going to represent our competitive game. This doesn't actually have a benchmark, so all I do is just walk here, shoot a couple of guys and then stop the benchmark. Simple. What's that we're getting though? 163 frames a second at 4K on an RTX 3090. Like it's live, you can see it. And then finally we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider and this is obviously a very GPU intensive game but it is also a CPU intensive game. So at 1080p I've seen some bottlenecking before. I think you get the idea at this point. We're testing out pretty much a wide variety of games and a wide variety of situations and resolutions that should reveal any subtle differences between this in Gen 3 and Gen 4 mode. Is that convincing? I'm in an elevator. 
With all of those tests complete then, all that's left to do now is just re-enable generation four, save, exit, and retest. Things just got dramatic. Here we are then, benchmarking complete, and yes, it took a while, but the results are what's important. Here we are, let's start with Horizon Zero Dawn. Here we have generation three and 4K. We got 80 frames a second, not too bad. Cranking up to Gen 4, and we saw an improvement, this time of two frames a second, so nothing that is particularly game-changing, but still pretty good to have. Moving on to 1440p though, and this is where things do get very interesting. Generation 3, average of 130 frames a second, but you'll notice that we're starting to get a little bit CPU limited here now. It's not that dramatic, but our average CPU frame rate is slightly lower than our GPU frame rate. Moving on to Generation 4, are we going to see an improvement? No, 126 frames a second. And this goes to show that in Horizon, at 1440p at least, it seems to be pretty circumstantial. There's not a clear lead for Gen 4 or Gen 3. It's going to depend on run to run. Let's fire up Shadow of the Tomb Raider and have a look at those results. Here we got an average of 113 frames a second. This was Gen 3. Will we see an improvement? 115. So an extra two frames a second there based on the fact that we have Gen 4 enabled. But again, this is pretty circumstantial. I wouldn't say that this is a clear victory. Let's move over to 1440p, 135 frames a second at Gen 3, moving on to 137. So actually we got an increase of two frames a second in both instances, but it's not really giving us a clear advantage. Let's move across to our final test though, the curveball, I guess, Civilization 6. And here we have an average frame time of 7.5 milliseconds, which is what, about 135 frames a second. Moving over to Gen 4 though, as that was the Gen 3 result, it actually is a little bit lower at 6.9 milliseconds. Okay then, we have actually seen some difference in some games, both Apex and Civilization. We did see a difference in frame rates, but you've got to remember that increasing the data rate doesn't necessarily give you a better frame rate. And I spoke to KitGuru and they've done some extensive testing on this as well with a 3080 and they We've seen very few differences as well. So I guess the feedback really is that while it is important and obviously you should choose Gen 4 if you can, it's not the most important factor. And in fact, if you are CPU limited as we have been at pretty much all of the lower resolutions, then I would wager that having a more powerful CPU or overclocking your CPU is actually gonna make a bigger difference to your frame rate than just PCI Gen 4 alone. Which is why it's time to shut this computer down take the 3090 out and try our Intel system and see if that makes any difference. I can feel the fanboys already going, this isn't fair, there's, there's gonna be something, this isn't right, AMD is the best. All right, make your own video then. Here we have our Intel system. This is running a 10850K and I've picked this over the 9900K just because while they're pretty much the same CPU with a very slight difference in boost clock speed, they are actually pretty comparable when it comes to price. And there's not really any point me comparing a more expensive CPU to a less expensive one. We want it to be as fair as possible. Here's the page then that proves that I'm not cheating. We have XMP enabled, but everything else is set to out the box automatic. Oh, I just realized I didn't actually copy the results onto this USB stick. So now I've got to put the other computer back together again just to get them off. Frustrating. But we've got all the Intel results. It's all coming together. Verdict time. I'm telling you, the amount of effort that's gone into this video, you can, you can at least like it. Do me a favor, smash that like button now, please. Here we go then. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Has everyone that's been commenting about PCI Gen 4 been right or wrong? or somewhere in between. Let's start with Apex Legends. You may recall we had a score of 276 frames a second at 1080p at Gen 3. That then improved to 281 as soon as we enabled Gen 4. So that's 281 frames a second to beat. And on Gen 3, but with our i9, we got 289 frames a second. So that is an improvement on the Intel system of what's that, eight frames a second. Moving across to Rise of the Tomb Raider, and we did have 113 frames a second. We then improved that to 115 once we moved over to Gen 4. But fundamentally, we were GPU bound at 79% versus going to the i9 and that actually changes to 99% GPU found so that CPU is allowed to stretch its legs a little bit more. Dropping the resolution down to 1440p and I'm afraid for the Ryzen fanboys out there it's not brilliant news. 135 frames a second, 137 frames a second with Gen 4 
a massive 165 once we went over to the Intel system. In Civilization VI, Gathering Storm, you may recall we had 7.53 milliseconds. That then went down quite dramatically to 6.9 milliseconds. And then over on the Intel system, 7.1. So that is actually a win there for that Ryzen system. Our final game, Horizon Zero Dawn, 80 frames a second, Gen 3, improved to 82 on Ryzen Gen 4, and then over on this Intel system, 83. Which then leads us on to the final test. I know you can have a break from the numbers after this, go watch, I don't know, some ASMR or something, I don't know, amuse yourselves. 130 frames a second at 1440p on Gen 3, 126 on Gen 4, drum roll for the final number, 140 on the Intel system. But I'd like to point out that this is not a loss for the Ryzen system because it is gonna win in some regards. Obviously at the moment and at the time of filming, the CPU is actually around about, what, 20, 30 pounds cheaper, so you're saving a little bit of money. You could grab yourself a B550 motherboard, they're a lot cheaper. This is why it's a difficult decision to actually pick your CPU for your system. It's more about what you need, how much you're willing to spend, and what you're gonna be pairing it with. When Intel comes out with their marketing and says the world's fastest gaming CPU, they're not lying. I mean, this test clearly shows that, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually gonna be any faster for you. If, if you grab like a pretty normal graphics card that doesn't cost 1,500 pounds, then you would probably see very similar results between the two. And I'd like to point out that we're still seeing pretty similar results, even at the very top end. But anyway, that has been this video on PCI Generation 4. It was actually quite a bumpy ride. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please smash that like button. You should have already done that by now. But if you haven't, here's another chance to do so. Get yourself subscribed for more videos just like this. You can find more videos in the end screen, including this Ryzen build and including that i9 RTX 3090 build. There's so many numbers I'm getting confused, which probably means it's time for me to end. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.